Hello, and welcome to this video lecture. In this video, we will be talking about basic theory of the variable approach. Answer A or B. Definition of variable approach. DS, original condition, question. 1, condition 1, 2, condition 2. Now, we will look at the approach to solving a DS question. The information given in the question prompt can be called the original condition, and the actual question can be written as Q. Condition 1. We will call the information in the first statement condition 1 and write it in short form as con1. Condition 2. We will call the information in the second statement condition 2 and write it in short form as con2. The variable approach has played an important role in improving students' GMAT scores by 100 points. We now want to pass this method on to the rest of the world. Later, after we have reviewed the different terms in a DS question, we will look at the three steps. First step, modify and recheck the original condition and the question to suit the type of information given. Modification. Second step, Check the number of variables and equations in the original condition. Third step. Try to match the number of variables with the number of equations in condition 1, condition 2, and the original condition. These three steps are the most important part in the variable approach. Especially the first step. Once you have completed the first step, solving the problem becomes much easier. Three principles. If you fall into any of the three principles below, choose most likely answer. So, if you find yourself experiencing any of the following principles, it is best to choose the most likely answer. Let's look at the three principles that you should apply for choosing the most likely answer without actually solving the problem by using the variable approach method. We are going to look at the three principles that you should apply which will allow you to choose the most likely answer without actually solving the problem. Not having to solve the problem saves a lot of time and is only possible by applying the variable approach method. First principle, the number of remaining questions times two minutes. To this, to accurately predict the time left to make sure you have sufficient time to complete the remaining questions. If there is not a lot of time left, Consider using the option of choosing the most likely answer, rather than trying to solve the entire problem. Second principle, five-minute deadline. If you are unable to answer the question within the five-minute deadline, it might be a good idea to simply choose the most likely answer. This applies even when there is enough time left until the end of the exam. Third principle, just want to skip. If you don't want to solve the question for whatever reason, consider the option of choosing the most likely answer. These three principles are extremely useful during the actual exam, as they will help you finish the exam on time and give you the greatest chance of doing well. The case of answer A or B. DS, one variable, question. 1, one equation. 2, one equation. DS question with one variable. Let's look at a DS question with one variable in the original condition. Now, one variable would generally require one equation to find the value of the variable. We know that each equation should give us an equation, and each equation should be able to give us the value of the variable. So, each condition should be sufficient independently, and we should logically get an answer D. The most likely answer is D if there is one variable in the original condition. The next most likely answers are A or B. In other words, the original condition gives us one variable. Condition 1 gives one equation. Condition 2 gives one equation. Each original condition plus condition 1 and original condition plus condition 2 gives us one variable and one equation. This means we will have two sets of matching variables and equations. Since we can solve for a unique value for each condition, D is most likely the correct answer. After learning the variable approach, 
Many students tell us they finish the exam with 10 minutes remaining, instead of running out of time. This could be your experience as well. Therefore, if you find yourself experiencing any of the following principles, it is best to choose the answer D. First principles the number of remaining questions times two minutes or less per question. If you have limited time left, consider the option of choosing the most likely answer, which in this case is D. Second principles five minute deadline. If you are unable to answer the question within the five minute deadline, consider choosing the most likely answer D. Third principles just want to skip. If you want to skip the question for whatever reason, choose D. In the original condition, we need one equation, so it's about 60% likely that D would be the answer. On the actual exam, be sure to pick D. However, in some cases, consider A or B. If you have not reached the five minute deadline and you know for sure that condition one doesn't work, but aren't sure about condition two works, Just choose B. Similarly, if before the five minute deadline you know for sure that condition two doesn't work and are not quite sure about condition one, just choose A. As I explained above, the variable approach helps you get a high score on the exam by choosing the most likely answer, rather than solving the entire question. This can be invaluable during the stress of writing the exam.